Let's Class YouTube fans, welcome back to our channel. And before I even get started, I'm going to tell you right now, this is 2023. I want you to subscribe right now before we ever get started. Go ahead, push the button. I'm waiting. All right. I trust that you did it. Okay. Uh, I want to send you on a little, I'm going to say, field trip I did with my buddy, Captain Billy Henderson, who's a very well-known guide here in the Citrus County area. Uh, he invited me to go out on his boat, and we surveyed uh, an area out of Chasowitzka and wanted to do a little trout fishing, but that's not what really this, I'm going to say this video is about. The video is when you get invited to go fishing on somebody else's boat, what's the etiquette? Okay. Um, you can't take everything that you take with your skiff. You got to take, well, a pared down version and I'm going to go through how you choose that. While I'm getting all that stuff together out of the truck right now, because this just happened the other day, you go watch some of the fish I caught with Billy, and I'll be back. Look at the size of that trout. Would you look at that? Big old Paul Brown fat boy. Man. I mean, that thing was barely moving. It was it was doing the the shakedown shimmy fall. Not at all, but I'll tell you what water temperature in the low to mid 60s after a big freeze that is a slabosaurus is it 58 wow so it's it's about what it was when i when i left them i know i'm taking a risk of breaking him off by doing this i'll tell you what that is going to be a fish that's going to be right there at it that is a chunk of trout. <laughs> that is a chunk of trout. He did not want it. He did not want it. Bent rod right there, and I mean he's throwing water. Throwing water. These fish are cold. 57.9 hey. degree water temperature. Yeah, well, it was just 56 a little while ago, so yeah. it warmed up a little bit. Up and it. Tell you what, catching a couple of them now. Catching a couple of them now. That's on skin series there, but it's definitely that size and that speed. Notice that? Yeah, Doesn't really matter what color it is. Super slow, no doubt. Yeah, size and speed. That thing's got some slabs on it too. That's a good. People don't understand how big you and I are. We make fish look small. Yeah. But those are. That is a good looking fish right there. Thick too. Oh yeah, chunk. Well, some type of little 
a parasite or worm on them. There it goes. Yeah, that water's like ice. It's like ice. It hurts your knuckles. Yeah. That's a good one. And I don't have any drag on at all. I'm dumbing this thing. Just dumbing it. Yeah, I'd be interested in seeing how cold it is because the incoming has definitely made it colder. Oh, yeah, no doubt. This rod's a little bit more forgiving. This one here's got a little more pep, though, for sure. Yeah. A lot more pep. But this is a lot softer yeah. rod. This is a better trout. I've you know, we make actually at Shimano, they make some really good rods that only cost a hundred bucks that are the best trout rods ever. Look at this. Oh man, that is. These girls are thick. Thick, thick, thick. I know I take a chance every time I do this. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. You know, that one's not super long. Let me whip my hand. I mean, thick. It's tall in the back. Oh, man. Crazy. Just crazy. Beautiful. Uh, like my cotton candy. Big. Big. That one's I moving just, and throwing some water, too. I think there's more fish here than we're catching. I just I think, think it's so cold. Really numb. Because yeah. I was absolutely, I never moved it from the time I cast it out there. Yeah. Good old summer yeah. Ooh. Oh, got, big boy. Yeah. color in the jaw. Yeah. Yeah. Striking something he's familiar with. Thinner body to that yeah. one. Yeah. Probably why he's so hungry. Yeah. It's like it's like grabbing an alligator. It's like you better be sure when you grab him. Yeah. Make, move. Make, <laughs> make that move. move. You go. Make that move count. Beautiful fish. Yeah, he's definitely not as thick. He's he's solid, but he ain't. Yeah, but still a long fish. Yeah. Good looking trout. Good looking trout. Let me just look at this. And it's just that it's that off, having man. that right lure speed. Always a good day when you're catching. Yep. This weather's gonna do over the weekend and let the weekenders have it and get back after it next week. Out here Monday and they'll probably go crazy. So, not bad fishing. We did catch more fish. Uh, I just, I can't make the videos a half an hour long or you won't watch the whole thing. Or maybe you will, I don't know. Um, so what is what I would call the right uh, etiquette, if you will, when you're invited on somebody's boat? Because naturally you can't bring six rods, you can't bring a big Camino bag full of all your Busby stuff and swarm bags and all that. So when I packed for this, I only wanted to bring two rods, uh, knowing that that wouldn't be a big deal. That gives me two options. And being that we were trout fishing, I really wanted just to bring one box. Now, he told me I could bring whatever I wanted to bring. We always say that. All, all your buddies are going to say that. But when you get there and they see all that stuff that you're dragging down the dock, they're not going to be happy because there's no place for it to put it. That means they're going to have to take their stuff out and put it in the truck so you can put your stuff in. So I don't bring a lot. I bring one 28 colony, and I did bring some soft baits that I never use, but I did have my pliers in here, and I had my leader wheels in here along with a couple of soft baits just in case, well, the bite was tougher. The bite wasn't tough. It was difficult. Um, a lot of it had to do with the tempo, uh, the lure speed, and then picking the right size baits and just, you know, kind of working it out. But I, I really wanted to just talk about 
I'm only bringing two rods. I know I'm trout fishing. Now, I wouldn't bring the stuff that I brought uh, to fish with him unless I was quite certain all we were going to do is trout fish. So I brought one medium action rod and I brought one, well, kind of medium with a little more forgiving tip for treble hook baits. So I brought two rods uh, and, and they served me well. They were exactly what I needed. And then I, I really want to show you this 28 colony box because the way this thing is set up, uh, I, I brought a number of hard baits mostly suspenders, but a couple of topwaters, which we never use, a couple of old classic baits that I had in here. And then I have a couple of boxes here on the side that have some terminal tackle, because if we use that soft bait stuff, we were going to have to have some terminal tackle with it. And I wanted to use mine, naturally. And then there's an expectation by the, by the guest that he would have the other things that I might need, like I knew he was going to have leader material, and I knew he'd have de-hooking tools and things like that, but let me go through this box. I'll start pulling out little compartments, and I'll show you a few of the things uh, that we leveraged in this particular video that I think you're going to find interesting. First off, one of the coolest things about uh, Busby being a partner are these colony boxes. Like I just showed you, they're they're pretty pretty unique. What you can break the boxes out of the actual tackle box, and and customize that any way you want because there are just all kinds of different combinations uh, where I can take whatever I want. So I can have nothing but you know big long rectangle boxes or a bunch of small ones. It's just it's a it's a cool system. And none of my Z-Man stuff ever melts in it. First little compartment box that I want to show you guys, though, is I brought some Paul Browns. And naturally, this was the Paul Brown that I caught the fish on. But I brought a bunch of Paul Browns, both the Fat Boys and the Originals. And uh, these are just fantastic trout baits and always a staple in my box. Uh, aside from that, naturally, you saw us. Uh, we... we pulled out the 27 MRs, and I've got several here. <laughs> One thing I don't count on is getting them all tangled up. But uh, the cotton candy was the one that I like to throw the most, and, and I, I throw that lots of times because I can see that bright pink color out there. So when I'm looking at targets out there and I make that cast, if I got a nice bright bait on it and I move it over a hole or a, just a little slew or around some some kelp grass in there. I can see exactly where my lure is. If it's too naturally colored, lots of times I can't. I'm just guessing if it's there. And in my opinion, I don't think the trout care about the color nearly as much as we do. That's a whole nother YouTube video. So a couple of good 27 MRs, like the Florida Cracker color. Uh, I've got a, a bleach blonde color in here, which a lot of, a lot of you all know as the... Uh, well, if you're a Texas guy, you know it as the, the gringo color, they call it. Um, but really cool color. Solid white, believe it or not. But I can see it really well in the water, and it's an excellent snook color. Um, you'll notice, though, on this one here, see how I've upgraded to the KVD hooks? These are a little lighter than the stock hooks that come on Miradin XLs. And it, it, it allows this boat to it allows this bait to basically float. Uh, it hardly sinks at all, and we can work it over a lot of that shallow rock that you could see in the video. Now, there was only a few other baits that we really threw that day, as many baits as I brought, and I'll show those to you real quick, and then I'll talk about um, a little bit more about that etiquette. Another one of my boxes here, let me pull out topwaters. Uh, brought some top pups, uh, the dude color right here. That's a great color. Man, they love that. It's got a nice dark belly. Silhouette's really good up there when it's walking by. And then something with a little higher pitch rattle, which is the she pup. Great color. Uh, this one's had the fire knocked out of it. It's missing a lot of the paint job. And then I brought another box here that I have some of my classic baits in. I always bring these because when I'm fishing with someone that, uh, that has fished for a long time, like Billy, um, pulling out some of these nostalgic baits, like the 5M Mirror Lure, 
uh, with a prop on the back here. It's a slurp bait. This is a great trout bait. does a fantastic job. And then the old number 11 color, which is the woody woodpecker color. This is a great floater diver. And, and a lot of the new school uh, trout anglers, they don't, they don't look at baits like this uh, the way that Billy and I would. We like throwing old school baits like this because the trout don't see these types of actions and these types of colors that much. And sometimes that's the difference of getting a bite or not. All right, so for me, you know, I just took the, the one colony box and I took this one Busby bag and that was all I brought, two rods that he put in the rod holders back there in the back of his custom boats that he builds. And that's it. The best part about this stuff is with the colony boxes, you can, it's not only the customizable part of the box, it's the fact that it's got this ring all the way around it, this yellow gasket, and it's pressed into the lid. So I don't got to worry about it getting wet or if we had water floating around the boat or anything like that. All the hinges are stainless. They're all stainless hinges on here. Don't got to worry about them rusting. All high quality latches and nothing gets messed up in here. Um, the way they build it with the compartment boxes and the lid closes down on them, even if you have small hooks and stuff, they can't slide back and forth. And then their little tackle organization bags are nice and clear uh, so you can see what's inside the bag. Uh, a lot of guys like to just write on the back with a permanent Sharpie, hey, this is my jerkbait one. They buy the whole system. Uh, these are weatherproof bags, so them sitting out on the deck, really not that big a problem. All right, uh, here's something I, I do want to say, uh, because I know some of you are going to mention it in the comments, uh, because I this is a sponsor-oriented channel, and for us to, to take this to the next level, I've got to talk about my sponsors. Busby is a pretty important sponsor for our YouTube channel, so naturally I'm going to talk about that product this year, and a lot of Shimano stuff. So I look forward to having more and more of you follow along with us, and like I say at the end of every one of these videos, I want to be able to create five and six of these videos per week. That's right. Because the more videos I can create, the more stuff you guys can learn about inshore fishing. All right. I'm going to get back after it. I've got a little bit more stuff to do. I've got a couple of trips this week, first week of 2023. And I'm, I'm anxious to get back on the water. We've had a really nice warm up after that deep freeze. You, you heard us talking on the boat, Billy and I, about how the water temp had dropped way down into the 40s and had just started creeping back up into the 50s. Well, right now we're looking at 60 some odd degree water temperature. So can't wait to get my hands on a couple of plug rods and start going after it. All right, until next time, Captain CA, signing off.